welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I have another special guest. Introduce yourself. Um, my name is Moses. Um, yeah, we have <laughs> we have a mutual friend, and Moses and I have had conversations in the past, a couple conversations, and I thought to bring him on my channel so that we can talk about the whole Black Lives Matter movement, like racism, um, the sisters of racism, the brothers of racism, or just everything. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Did you go to the protest? Um, um yeah, no. I think Thursday. Was it Thursday? No. I don't think I was. I didn't like there was I wasn't aware of the exact one we were so I just and I, I had to work I think I've been working like throughout this week, so mm -hmm. I've not had time. Or like if I was aware of anyone, I probably would have gone, but I wasn't yeah. aware. Okay, so my question to you is like, how do you feel with like everything that's going on? Because apparently, like, there's a protest every day. Yeah. If it's like Canada or America or yeah. like, I just even found out today that like people are still protesting yeah. like two weeks now. So, like, how how do you feel about that? Well, um, it's a lot, really. Like, it's it's hard really to open your phone, check on Twitter, and see like. Things trending, people um, complaining and I don't know, panicking and all that. I, yeah. And yeah, like it's valid. Yeah, um, it's it's like years of pain, years of yeah. um, sadness mm -hmm. and all that. So it's it's in them. It's normal for them to let it out. Yeah, yeah. it's just sad because I'm here and yeah. I don't know. It can happen to me at any time. Yeah. So although I like, I, I don't think I. Yeah, had like experiences. conscious experience. Yeah. yeah. It might have happened but I didn't even mm -hmm. notice but mm -hmm. it's still hard like looking at me like like tomorrow it might be me. I might just be walking on the street and it might be me. So it's really difficult. That's what I was saying, um, because I posted something on my IG stories a couple weeks ago and I was telling people like if you don't care, not even, not even like if you don't care, like you have to like don't be bothered about oh I'm not in America, it doesn't affect me kind of thing because like when they see you, I let me not say they but like when somebody is being racist to you, they're not going yeah. to ask you like are you Nigerian or American? Like it's based on the color of your skin. Yeah. I think I think so, that that also came up in um because I'm like part of like I say subconsciously I'm part of like Nigerian Twitter, yeah. Okay. So um that also came up that argument also came up on yeah. Nigerian Twitter poor like um why are you complaining about racism when you are here there's tribalism like to you personally like not to me personally like, yeah. probably would have answered the person but like i saw it, it was like, a conversation oh, yeah, yeah. Like, why are people taking it up that like, it's just it's been um they're like you look foolish like why are you wow. complaining and in my mind i was like what happens when you feel like it, you are you are safe from it here yeah. yeah. what happens when you get a job offer to the us today yeah and you have to go there like you think they will ask oh this person is not from nigeria so it's not from the us so um we can at least value his life. You don't yeah. value your life based on your skin color. Yeah. And also, racism goes everywhere. Even when they come to Nigeria, yeah. Yeah, even when they come to the different the African countries, yeah. the white people, they still feel so superior to the black people. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not even a thing about location. location racism is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's not a thing of location, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, like, another thing, for me, I'm just happy about, like, what the protests have done and like the petitions and everything um because there's actually progress not saying like nobody knows when racism will end because at the end of the day it's a mindset yeah. like it's how you think how you feel about someone which is unfair yeah. but in terms of like the authorities because those people to have the say in terms yeah. of like or the president or the police like getting justice from their end i don't yeah. know if i'm putting that correctly it, we've like experienced progress so for me i feel like the protest and everything it's it's good like it has raised a number of or a good amount of like awareness and just helped bring some some form of resolution not completely but yeah. we're getting i think it's, so. it's evident in how um, how far like the, the protest started from i think minneapolis i guess yeah yeah we started from there and just Three days ago, I was seeing um, on our local, um, I think CBC, yeah. they were having an argument about whether they should have body cams for Canadian police officers. This conversation would have not come up if not because of the protest. 
this like mm-hmm. you know so like everybody is having to sit up and sit right like, and review yeah, yeah review their actions and oh yeah mm-hmm. this is racist like i'm even happy that we're, we're doing it in even in the tiny things yeah like, the things, yeah. things we say the things we do like people are reviewing oh this might be racist this yeah. might not be like how does this like, person feel you get yeah, yeah. Even up to the extent of pulling down statues, that I mean, <laughs> I've been so that. happy about it. Well, you know they put it back. They put you know, it they're putting it back in a museum. Yeah, okay. that, that's where it should be in a museum. Then with um, I don't know a brief description of yeah, oh, this person did this, 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 but it was also racist, so it was also this. Yeah, mm-hmm. but having to, I also saw it, um, something on CBC this morning, and the lady was like, I think it was in um, McGill in um, Montreal yeah. in University, and they were like, I think the founder. The land where the university is yeah. was a land where uh, the um, slave, slave yeah, exactly. And they have like statues of the guys that did the whole slavery stuff there. Yeah. And the lady, um, the black lady, was like, um, she comes to work every morning, seeing that yeah. statue, yeah. and yeah. it feels like she's relieving that like pain. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. now they're glorifying them, they're making them seem good, and. It, that's not how it should be. It should mm-hmm. be in the museum. People that want to see, it should see. It. I should not have to. Oh, the statue of the slave tree. That yes, is not the people. Yes. Oh, wow. Like I should not have to see um, the person that oppressed my, yeah. my ancestors. I should mm-hmm. not have to see him every day and glorify him or make him feel like a hero. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. So that's how that's how I feel like on on that aspect. I guess. Yeah. yeah. But thankfully, there's like some actually even in Nigeria because that, that Nigeria is a different story because that you have justice for women not even just like tribalism or colorism or whatever it's just like women like young women being raped abused and things like that they've like been having protests as well and trying to just make things better with the government and i'm just thankful that there's unity like people are actually coming together like even with the celebrities in nigeria because they have like a better advantage yeah. of getting connections um but just like the unity and like how we've come together to do our own parts, even if it's not like okay, one person cannot maybe donate to this uh, fund or whatever, yeah. but this person can share that kind of thing. But just like raising, I don't know, it's just been a lot. I feel like even just living now, because obviously I, I, I haven't experienced racism in my yeah. first time, but just to see how we are, tri- how triggered we are, how yeah. much we're passionate about like putting a stop to the nonsense that's happening, yeah. it just makes me um, happy and glad. For um, for people that say um, protests do not do anything, I, I actually do not believe in mm-hmm. that because I believe like even if you go five days and shout, it doesn't seem like you're making sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least you have put that conversation back on the table of the yeah. people that decide. Yeah, because mm-hmm. going back, I just want to go back to this rape issue you mentioned in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, when the whole um, rape um, protest started, yeah. yeah, it has made them to increase. Some states have increased like the jail term for rapists yeah. and attempted rapists. So mm-hmm. I think rape in some states now is now like life in attempted rapists, I think fifteen years. Like so people see justice. Although it's still like we're still a long way from the but at least yeah. this wouldn't have happened if people didn't protest, if people didn't cry out yeah. and all that. So it's nobody is saying yeah, racism or rape will end today or mm-hmm. it will end immediately with protests. No. Mm-hmm. But it's That's like so yeah, the steps we take towards we are still going to be racist like forever. I yeah, we are yeah, doing forever. so too. Yeah, I was but, like scared to see about that. But we 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 need to create um a system or have any anyway, world where racists feel uncomfortable like yeah. being racist. Being they don't racist. want to they don't have to or they don't show their That's racist good. side yeah. without just without having to fear exactly yeah. so they, even if they want to be racist they can be racist in their house mm-hmm. but outside they know that if they they will be punished yeah, yeah that's that's, that's the world that we are fighting for i guess and then it, i wanted to say something else like i know i've seen some tweets where people are like oh we need to like i'm getting educated yeah. or like i need to or like educate these people or like even um white people say no i need to get educated yeah. and a part of me is like I don't know how to balance that because it's like okay yeah be aware because there are some things that you say and you wouldn't intend it to be yeah. to have like a negative effect but it will come off as wrong right yeah. and so like i'm trying to have a balance with that because it's like why do you need to educate yourself on how to treat somebody with 
pretty much respect because at the end of the day we are human like i don't it's so it was so hard for me to understand because we didn't choose to be created the way we are created not even discrediting god or complaining or anything like that but we were all made how we were made nobody came to this earth and say painting their body black or like painting their body a different color and so for me it's like this is something that a human something that has feelings should already know like you don't need to educate yourself on how to be fair to someone how to treat somebody how they they deserve to be treated how to just have human feelings so i was trying to have balance with that but at the same time it's like what i was struggling with is understanding that some people just don't know who god is they don't know who christ is and so because of that there's especially like with the police officers and how they just kill people there's to me that's just evil because if you don't know god if you don't know and then god is obviously love and so if you don't have that spirit in you then it's the other side the evil side that you have so you when there's evil there you're just blind to a lot of things and so i've just like even knowing that i think someone reminded me of that it's like okay they they just because you can't tell me that you have the fear of god in you and like you just treat somebody like you dare you or something like that i don't know but yeah that has just helped me to balance it out but then when people say education it's like in i don't know like just ha- it's just it's just common sense it's just human to yeah. i think you know i, I think know. I've, i had that same i spoke to someone recently on that yeah. but it was more on rape and we were discussing how to i was like i even don't want to i hate seeing all this stop rape because rape is no that rape is bad yeah they know yeah yeah exactly there's no you saying stop is like you're pleading to them or you're yeah, begging, like them, begging them begging their yeah. demands like no they should be in jail like they should be locked up that's yeah. the thing yeah. don't tell like just because i don't think anybody would just want to have it in mind oh i'm going to rape this person then mm-hmm. they will now see a placard or a sign that says stop rape and they'll be like oh that's true this thing says i should stop rape probably i should stop nobody ever thinks like that yeah. if it's in your mindset it's in your mindset they're mm-hmm. going to do it they're going to do it mm-hmm. so I believe that that the education here, yeah, in that part, for racism, I believe that it's probably in just those little things, yeah, yeah. those little things, those um, yeah, well, the majority of the things, the, the major things, people mm-hmm. already know everything. Yeah. Like you don't have to sit down in class to know that you, have, you should treat everybody yeah, should treat the same. Everyone the same. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. you, you call because usually you call when you're angry at someone, you call your fellow white guy. Like, oh. Call him names, insult him. Yeah. But when you want to call insult a black guy, you use the N word yeah. because you know that that N word pains him more. Yeah. So you know there's nothing like oh I I, I I need to yeah. Yeah. yeah only in things that oh, okay this thing might come off as racist okay yeah. or it might or come like, off like, exactly exactly yeah. okay we can allow those ones or we can understand but yeah. when it comes to things that you willingly say or admit to no I don't think there's any education you need you don't need education to be a good person. Yeah. Yeah, then also for the police um, and the fear of God. Mm-hmm. I believe that, in a way, because I've been seeing people saying, oh, um, some police officers are good. Mm-hmm. Um, I even saw them, I think they charged the four police officers. They wanted to remove, they are trying to reduce the sentence for one of them because he's a Is it the one that killed them? No, no, no. Not, yeah, the one that killed the judge. Oh. Yeah, he said I that one was a rookie. Yeah, that like he's a rookie and um, he didn't know, like, and, and it's understandable because when you're in an organization, you don't go above your like, superior. It's yeah. understandable, but it's foolish because when organization doesn't ever trump human lives, yeah, like yeah, he's no matter what, it. if you need to, even if it means losing your job for that guy to stay alive, yeah, it's the best thing to do. It's, it's the right thing to do because if anybody ever watches that video and sees that you push that guy off his neck, mm. you'll be the hero. You, nobody will charge you. Yeah. But you looked at it and you're like, oh. Well, yeah, it's it's um, it's my superior. So I believe that in a way all cops are complicit. Like they are they yeah. are part of this problem because okay. even if you are good, even if you are good, yeah, yeah. there at least a police station where something bad has happened. There's a scandal at least in every police station. Mm-hmm. And so even if you are good, what have you done to stop it? You know, there's no how. There's nothing like this thing happens and they hide it in the police station. Everybody knows what happens. Mm-hmm. So what do you as a good cop? What do you do? You, it's, I feel it's better for you to just drop your badge and go because it, it, there's no point. Because it's just a exactly. human thing to do. It's because just yeah, they will lump people up. They will lump people up together. Yeah. So if you want to have your heart, either you say it out and publicly denounce them, 
And what do you now even say? Oh, I was trying to keep my job, so like I let him die. Exactly. Like, like, it doesn't. Know. It doesn't make sense humanly yeah. because people are trying to paint the human aspect of cops. I've seen pictures where you, you see like I saw a cop holding his child, and people were like, "Well, this lady has not been. This lady has been seeing the, um, the TV. She has been watching the TV for a while, and she sees them attacking her dad, dad's job, and she's crying with that." And I'm like, are you trying to feel? Or even the people that were saying, oh, like you know, in the protest, yeah. the police people were like standing there, like yeah. trying to stop them and all. And then I saw one tweet like, oh, the police are trying to go home to their families. I'm like, what? I'm like, George's daughter would not have. George's daughter doesn't have a father, a father now. Like, pretty much. You are here crying that your dad. Mom was trying to go home. home to man, exactly. Oh, like he doesn't have a father. She doesn't have a father now. Yeah. People that have died don't have fathers, they don't have mothers, they don't yeah. have brothers. So like, who are you for? Who are you to ask for our pain? Like, yeah. Why should we feel sympathy for you yeah. when you don't? The same police force, the system mm-hmm. doesn't feel sympathy for us. Because yeah. even if you tell me they do it and they do it like a mistake, yeah. okay, you take someone's life by mistake, which is very stupid because they don't <laughs> you take it by mistake. Yeah. Why? Why does the system protect you? Why don't you come out if you're a human? Why don't you come out and say and own up to your mistakes? Yeah. Because when a black guy holds as much as a cigarette or like um, a blunt, mm-hmm. they arrest them like so fast because of that small mistake. So yeah. why can't the system arrest you because of this small mistake? Like why can't you come up and say, "Oh, I made a mistake. I killed this guy unknowingly. It was unfair." Mm-hmm. I want to be, if you have a good heart, you do that. But because you don't have a good heart, that's that's the thing. And the system protects you, yeah. so it's it's tough. That's crazy. And then I also wanted to talk about how, because I know some people have been saying, oh, colorism is like the sister or the child of racism. Yeah. And in Nigeria, because I'm going to go back, I'm, I'm going to keep going back to our country because, I don't know, it's just it's just too much. Because even like with the whole racism thing, one thing it tainted for me was that's interracial. Okay, so like it just tainted that image for me because there was a time where I would just see and I was telling someone this, like I would just see an interracial couple, and I'm like, I usually want to be, <laughs> I'm like, I usually want to be with your oppressor right now, or even I don't know, not even that, but the way it has always been, it just feels like, and in some cases, it's like the black guys in that relationship date white girls at a black man's expense, if that makes sense, because you have those guys that will be in that. Um, in that interracial relationship and they'll be like oh black women are the, this black women are like they're they're fake like why do we have to wear weaves or things like that and it's like just be happy in your relationship you don't have to like what is that the reason you're dating this person to get away from you know being with a black woman and to me it's just like the whole racism thing has now affected the mentality of how like black guys treat black women or how they see black women because you have some black guys openly say so many like degrading things about black women or like we look like monkeys or gorillas and to me it just like tainted the whole image of seeing an interracial couple together that i just like in my mind summed up that oh anybody that is willingly dating a white woman is thinks that black women are ugly or like doesn't um i don't know it's maybe a shade to be with a black woman that kind of thing because like there are people that will actually say even on twitter that place just it just amazes me because people will say, oh, like a uh, a black woman is, or a white woman is finer, or even not even a white woman. They will go to like the, the whole colorism thing now and be like, oh, a lighter skin girl is finer than a darker skin girl. Because I know even in my high school, like I faced so much, I don't know, colorist attacks. Because I think I was way darker than this in high school, and I had a friend. I don't know if I can call her name, but I had a friend. We we're really close. We were best friends at some point, but she was lighter than me. Yeah. But we were so similar in so many ways. Um, and then we were very popular as well in high school. And there were times where we would be compared together in terms of like fineness or like, and it, it was so annoying because this thing was just taking me back to like so many memories. Like you said, like even if you you might not remember cautiously yeah. if you've like encountered racism, but yeah. it has happened yeah. probably. So for me, I feel like the whole, for me, it started with like the whole colorist attack. Like people would say, oh, like she's finer than me. I remember one day I was um, beefing or fighting with this girl, and they should have asked her like, "Who is finer between Chidera and this girl?" And she just said the girl's name, and like I'm just like, "Wow!" Like, what would I have done to my self-esteem if I was someone that didn't have any confidence in myself? Like, what would I have done? And there were even times where I would see my color as just being 
ugly because people will give me names. They will call me old Blackie Chan. I think she did that so they used to call me high school Blackie Chan. I'm like, <laughs> and it was so funny because, like, why am I being taught that my skin color is ugly even from that age like it just sends a very negative message i don't know so for me i feel like that's another thing in nigeria or that's another thing in general it's just like the preference for having um a white spouse i don't know how to put it but i don't know the whole mindset just made me act negative or have like a a negative mindset towards like interracial couple couples so first it's First, um, personally, yeah, if I was if I was ever to like, I don't know if I would like be able to date a white. No, I don't, let me just, I don't know if I'm going to. I think yeah. I'll be able to. Cause I, I okay, wait, let's just young, ask you. Yeah. Let me just ask you this: Do you think there's a problem with having a preference no. in skin color? No. So if a guy were to openly say, "Oh, I prefer," everybody prefers something. People, okay, let me put it this way. So do you have a preference? Do I have a preference? Like with skin color? No. Cause I don't think I don't think it's normal well, to is, see. Well, it's 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 because it's skin color. You're saying it this way. Yeah. Think of it as the whole physical appearance. Yeah. There are girls that say they don't they can't date short men. Yes or no? There are the girls that say they can't date men that don't have beards. Sure. So it depends on what people people just hold on to the skin color because I think it it's, it attacks you more. I guess. Yeah. It's 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 I don't know. Probably because the skin has been something that has been attacked over time yeah. from both racism part and yeah. colorist part. Yeah. Like there's no there's no word for someone that um, that um, discriminates against people that don't have beards. It wasn't like beardism or something. Yeah. Yeah. There's colorism, there's yeah. racism. So the skin is we are more sensitive to our skin color yeah. here. But well, I feel like you can have a preference, but do not openly rubbish order. Yeah, order. don't do yeah. it at the expense I can say, oh, of something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Some people actually say well, they can't date like dark skin guys. Although I feel like it's a very weird thing because I don't know how yeah, it's like, skin, but well, I don't know. Well, just, I don't okay, like don't you think? Don't you think it's like it, it's a poisoned mindset? I think for you to like in have that. There are some people that also say they cannot date like skin people. Like, yeah, they date black, dark skin like black, light skin people are not my type. So I feel, like, I feel, I feel, I feel that it's something that they condition. Yes, like, it's exactly. very oh my god. <laughs> but it means oh my god. light skin <laughs> people usually. Mind. Um, get that um, more pass. They usually get like yeah. more. Leverage. I don't say yes leverage yeah. over time because even in, look at even in like industries, even in um, industries and industries that require models. Like if they they already segregate people based on there's this societal body body structure that a woman should mm. have or a guy. Not mostly guys, but let's be factual. Like, Guys don't really suffer that much right? yeah. in that sense. Yeah. yeah, there's this appearance that a woman should have mm-hmm. that this guy is usually in industry usually push out. So yeah. when you don't fall under that appearance, that's that's entered our mind that yeah, yeah a girl that is so fair and all that is Skinny. so like yeah. much beauty more beautiful than yeah. I think I was having a conversation with um, a friend and she was like when she was in school they she's light skin when she was in school they used to say. If you were not light skinned, you would be ugly. Yeah. Like, how does that make sense? Yeah, like, you exactly. say she's fine because I've heard of skin. That. Exactly. That yeah, exactly. Sense? That's not like my condition. Because it's in our mind here. Yeah. We have it Nigeria in our mind. Nigerian colorism is just. And I think um, I like, want to link it to like, uh, the whole um, racism, racism mm-hmm. and slavery part because then yeah. we have always we have learned to see. And it's how also we treat like white people when it comes to Nigeria because I've, I've been. In like the corporate sector in Nigeria, mm. I've seen how people treat white people when yeah. they come to them. We treat them more than we treat ourselves. Even ourselves. Yeah, like when they come, when they come, they, they break through um, traffic laws. They pass um, yeah. anywhere they want, and we're like, once just oh, for that, we well done. And then it's like we already have that feeling or that behavior or that feeling that they are superior to us, mm-hmm. and that that's that's already the major problem. Like maybe, maybe because of how like. We see that they've advanced more mm-hmm. than us, or how they came for slavery and all that. Even when we have like children that, um, that are, like, let's say half caste, then put it that way, mm-hmm. that like mixed race, then put it Yeah, they gave more attention. Exactly, because they yeah. believe that. I think even Trevor Noah was talking about it that how he was born, his, his mom, his dad is Swiss, and his mom is South African, and he's like mixed race. Mm-hmm. And born, being mixed race, 
um, growing up in a black family yeah. that his grandma used to tell um, him to lead prayer because he's white and God answers the white man's prayer faster. What? That's how it is. Like, Jesus. She used to go lead to travel, lead the prayer. Even when it was like very small, lead the prayer because God will answer you faster being white. Wow. So we already have that thing in mind and it affects our colorism and how we view, um, I don't know, African or black skinned girls. Mm. How view them and we believe, oh, eh, she's not fine, she's dark, why are you this dark, why are you yeah. this black, why are you... It's nonsense, like, it's pure nonsense. It's it's something we should remove from our mind. Yeah. Because it's, I don't know, it's it's pure nonsense. I just feel like for guys, like, they should really check and search their soul when they really say, oh, they prefer a lighter skin. I want to say, I don't want to be too personal, but um, even, like, with people I have dated in the past, they're like, oh, they... They thought they would end up with like a lighter skin person and i'm just like why did you have that preference like why did you not even let's just have a conversation like why did you have that preference why did you think you as a black man as a dark skin you see yourself like with somebody that is lighter like what happens to what not not even like if you fall in love with a light skin person kudos to you that's good but for you to openly say oh i don't even know how to phrase it well but for you to just openly say um, I, I thought I would end up with like a light skin person or I prefer a light skin person. I don't know. I feel like there's there's a motive. Yeah, there might be something like at the back of your mind. Yeah. That triggers that or you already see like, or a light skin person. As, as, to or their features come yeah. out more. Like, I don't know. It's just weird. And well, I left, left for me. Eh? I feel you should be with whoever you want to be with. Yeah. Whoever is a good human being. Because yeah. in the end, quality. There are, there are things that when life doesn't know color, death doesn't know color, you mm-hmm. will all die. Yeah. Love doesn't know color. If you love someone because the person is light skin, then that's just too stupid. Like that's just nonsense. Because mm-hmm. what happens when the person has bronze? What happens? Why why would you love someone because of like physical attributes? Exactly. Because what happens when those physical attributes go? I, I believe everybody should. I don't know. Your preference is your preference. Yeah. But don't let your preference be like you said, think deeply about why you have that. Like preference. why how yeah. yeah. And please don't let it be at the expense of like a black because ah god that thing makes me so annoyed when i do and especially with those uk guys like they'll be saying black women are like why do we wear weaves how is that your business nigerian like guys. just so and, many, and drunk guys do it a lot too yeah like oh the act oh my god nigerian guys <laughs> it's so sad but like they i don't know they just have this controlling um would I say character? Yeah. Like they want it, they all like be natural, like don't wear makeup, like why do you wear makeup? This is too much, like your hair, do your hair like this. Like they just have that dominant character, they just want to control everything. And so for me, it's just like I don't know. Like a lot, I don't know, the whole racism thing, I feel like it's affected a lot of yeah. our conditioning and how we see things and how we think of things. And I don't know. Even even in um even in uh even down all the way to like our fathers and our yeah. mothers. They view like light skinned girls as supposed to have um, more bright eyes, I guess, than others. You hear, oh, you want to marry my daughter. She went to this one, she's even fair. My fair daughter, you want mm. to marry. Like, being fair has more value to them than that someone that is just dark yeah. skinned. Yeah, even if you're like, even if the fair person is not as beautiful as the other person, yeah. they believe that because you apply your skin color, mm-hmm. you are when you go, like exactly, you are, yeah, you are, we'll yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You go, you go. And when we'll you start calling someone that, when you go, you go, it's already conditioned in your mind that that person is light skin, that person is white, and that person yeah. is like head of you, or is more beautiful than or anything you have seen. Exactly. So wow. it happens even in. I think there was complaint recently about Unilag that they were like. um you know, like guys on uh, university guys that they come to people who come to university and lecturers will be telling them to cut their hairs, don't use tattoos and all that nonsense. Mm-hmm. And then um when those guys foreign students come to Nigeria to study in that same uni like yeah. lecturers leave them with their like dreads, leave them with whatever hairstyle they want to do because they are foreign, because they look um mixed race, because mm-hmm. it feels like they don't want to they don't want to do anything to them or they don't want to lay down their rules, I guess. So yeah. It feels like we already have it in our mind that so oh, just like yeah, easy. anything foreign is better than yeah, than that's us. True. Yeah. So and in a way, yeah, it has also affected the black um black Americans mm-hmm. in like um, in the US. Yeah. Because now they see 
people from Africa as even less than them. Yeah. I saw a video recently on Twitter. Um, a store manager. Yeah. Um, I think it was security um, at the store. Yeah. Guys, it was obviously Nigerian because of how he was sounding. I knew immediately it was Nigerian. Yeah. So like this black American um, came to the store to get something, and the African guy is let me say Nigerian guy. Mm. His his job is to go around like walk around um, the store and just mm. check up stuff, make sure everything is in order. If you need help, you can. But it's just security, just secure stuff. Mm. And the African American, uh, the black American guy said thought um, the guy was being racist towards him. That why are you following me? And I'm like, yeah, I was like. I'm black like this you. Like, yeah. like I'm black like you. Why would I? It's yeah. my job to go around. And he was like, "You're following me." I was like, "You are not." I think he used the statement. I'm not. Sure. I can't remember the statement. I knew that. I think that's true. But he was like, "Well, you are not. You are not black like me, or something that, or something." He said, "You're African. You're not black." And I was like, "What?" In my mind, I'm like, "Do you do you believe um, the police have?" Like passport checkers or something like that. Like, oh, let me see your passport. Oh, you're Nigerian, no, so we cannot do it. Like you're all black. Black mm-hmm. is your skin color, not not your nationality. Like, yeah. It's your skin color. Yeah. So why why would you say oh you are not black? And even if it's nationality, oh, you're less, you're like, like, exactly. He was like oh you are not you no know, you're not black you're African. So and it was being the Nigerian guy was being all typical you, but was being all oh, my guy, my friend. It's not, it's not like that. And it was like touching him and all. And like, it's not like man. It was like, oh, you're assaulting me. And I'm like, are you going to do this for your fellow African guy? Like, are you seriously going to do this? You already see them as, as ahead. Yeah. And it is that's just one instance. I think when J Cole came to Nigeria too, they were like, oh, we have electricity. They were like, oh, so we have electricity. Oh Same when um, um Cardi B came to Nigeria too. Yeah. Oh, so these guys have lights. Oh, they don't live in huts. Yeah. And it's madness because you're like one. One Google search away from knowing everything about Africa. I feel like Africa. with them, it's just because you know how Africans were the ones that sold like slaves. I still don't believe that. No, no. I, it, according to the I, history okay. that I I okay. saw, and uh, because I did, I took history. Yeah. Um, Africans yeah. like started the whole slave trade thing. Yeah. Um, obviously it wasn't. Like it's, it's, I think it's a white man. I please don't quote me on this, but Africans say like slave trading, like they would trade slaves yeah. as um labor and then get whatever resources that they were getting back. But the beginning of like oppression and like abuse and things like that, like taking people for granted, it was the white man that started that. But slavery itself, slavery was already going on before these white people came and just started yeah. doing anything. And so I feel like. But like especially those Caribbeans, like the African Americans, I feel like there's still beef between Africans and African Americans because they are still upset with like us that I don't know say us, but well, yeah, that sold them to slavery and like started the whole slave trade thing. The, 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 so the um the flaw in that argument is yeah. that I read somewhere some um, recently that that argument most times is like used by white people to say, oh, it's not you know, like you yeah. guys are so yeah. yourself. No, I'm not but even it works, not that, but, but this is how like someone explained it that this yeah. how it works here. Yeah? That before these white guys came, yeah, there was nothing like for example, I'm going to use our country as an yeah. example. There was nothing like Nigeria before white people came. Yeah. There was the Ebas, there was Yoruba land, there was Igbos, there was different tribes, right? Mm-hmm. Now these different tribes were fighting. There is no even joke about that. They were always fighting to conquer land, yeah. to conquer spaces. This is my land. This is my space. Now, when, when they conquer something, like when they conquer one place, yeah. they pick up people that they see there, or the war criminals, people that they capture, like they capture yeah. the war fronts. They carry them back, and they become slaves to um, what do you call it? They become slaves to that kingdom. For example, if they've been if they've been in kingdom. For example, goes and attacks your, your kingdom. Yeah. They, if they, whatever they recover mm-hmm. the guys that they recover that they'll bring them they'll start working in their farm and mm-hmm. all that so then yeah it was it was a thing of war and conquer right mm-hmm. just for normal because they were all fighting for land it was very stupid they were fighting over land yeah, yeah. so when the white men came mm-hmm. yeah so most of these people that they saw were oh we already have these guys as our war criminals or our war slaves people that were captured from it because in the end yeah even in modern times, if people go to war, mm. people are fighting war. I think if like if you capture, you get to a point, you can kill like all the soldiers that are here, or you can capture some of them and go and torture. Might not torture them, but 
you can arrest them yeah. and probably make them face war crimes according to the UN, I guess. I don't know how it works with war. Mm-hmm. But so that's what they were doing. Capture, carry them back, yeah. then make them serve war crimes against like, it, it still doesn't really make sense too. But then the white guys came and started requesting for oh okay with slaves, with sell slaves, the ones they had. Then I also believe that there's a point it gets to here where you cannot give more slaves and when the white man is asking for more and you tell them no, they will take it by force. I believe that, that they will go to that point where you yeah. take it by force because yeah. they are, you hear um, tales about the conquer of the Benin Kingdom, the conquer of the probably the Lorraine Kingdom, like kingdoms that they conquered. And they conquered because these kingdoms resisted. Mm. Like, you can't, when we were still using bow and arrow, you can't compare with people that were already using guns and machine guns yeah. and all that. Yeah. So, they would conquer, take the king, kill the king, conquer, take the yeah. king, capture the king. I think there was a queen so, that they killed because she was trying to yeah, fight for. There are like so people. many, so many, like, yeah. in history that went like that, that died trying to fight for our people. So, when they captured those, those places, yeah. they become the rulers. So, whoever is there, they sell them to slave trade. Now, I'm not going to say they were not greedy more people. I'm sure they were greedy people that actually sold their people out for money or, mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. But to me, yeah, even if they didn't sell them out, I believe that the, the white man was taking it by force. <laughs> I still believe yeah. it. So yeah. I believe that the white man was taking it by force. So yeah. I don't know. Because we were comparing like around our sides. We didn't think of, oh, let's go all the way to Europe and go and fight. We didn't have that. We just wanted land or something or to live in peace or just not, yeah. I don't know, just not. Have that future within us, okay. Let's just border our lines, okay. This is our land, this is our land. But mm-hmm. well, these white guys came because they believed from the beginning that we were less than them mm-hmm. from the like from the get go. We were not, we were not fighting the egos because we believe we were less. Yeah. We were fighting them because we wanted our land, <laughs> exactly. we wanted land. But these ones came and said, Oh, who are these guys? These guys are monkeys, these guys are black. Oh, yeah. let's do it with them. Let's what can we do? Let's carry them. And we're hard working too. So let's carry them back to give us labor. Exactly, let them go and work <laughs> and and then even the trading, like okay, come and work for us as far like because the black people were used as labor. Yeah. Even like the trading, be, it became unfair because even like we getting or maybe building or whatever they were doing, they were profiting more. Like yeah. the white folk were profiting more yeah. and not even giving us what we deserved. So or, many of them had their like they had contracts. Well, I work for you for twenty years. Yeah. Probably free my child or mm-hmm. free me. And the white man is how do you fight the man has a gun from there? Yeah, you can't, so you have exactly. to like keep working and working. So many of them ran away and it was so rampant that even if you run away and you catch you like all the way far far away, mm-hmm. they'll bring you back. Bring you, back. you get like it was like only I mean, in pets. It was like, like only in pets then. And it's weird because we all bleed red and yeah. you are only your fellow human as a pet. Mm-hmm. So it's it's I don't know. Human rights, it's it's degrading, and trust me, it has not ended yet. Yeah. It's the the I don't know. They painted it as the system now. They painted no, oh, it's not slavery. We're not nobody flogging you, nobody using whips on you. Mm-hmm. You're not walking on the land, mm-hmm. but they are making us poor. They are making us suffer. Yeah. They are um, they are whatever opportunity we're supposed to have exactly. Job, so. They give us less hours to climb, yeah. cutting the ladders that we used to climb, mm. then putting us in that state of poverty, then putting the police around there. So okay, it's still so the same thing, like, but like the, whole, the method has changed yeah. pretty so, much. Okay, these guys here are poor. So if we put the police around them, it's logical that when there's poverty, crime will increase. Mm. So if we put the police around here and just wait for them, mm. once they commit one crime, we pick them up, pick them up. Give them, give them more sentence than usual. Let them just come stay in prison. Now, I also read that there's slavery in prison. Slavery was not abolished in the US, right? Mm-hmm. They said slavery would be stopped unless it is a punishment. So you can be a slave in prison. That's what, according to the constitution, you can be a slave. That's why they carry them to prison and they use them to work for like long and they pay them. I think. I think one Nigerian that went there, um, I don't know his name, is um, this Nigerian artist, Soski. I don't know if you've heard I think he went there and he, was, he, went to, he went to prison and was talking about how um, they had to work and for every hour they were paid, I think, 50 cents or 5 cents or so. So mm-hmm. imagine how many hours they had to work for you to even get a dollar. So, like, it's, 
It's almost like, oh yeah, they're paying you. It's paid labor, but it's it's slavery basically yeah. because you don't have any choice. Yeah. They carry you to fields to go and farm. They carry you to places to go and do stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they just repented slavery. It's still there. Mm-hmm. People still suffer from slavery. They just repented. And there's some people that are not, they don't even have that. They don't even have the. They have. They're so bold. They don't even repent it. They're telling like like Chinese, for example, mm-hmm. and they're Muslim concentration camps. They just keep Muslims. Once they're Muslim, they just keep you inside there. Like so, people are. This this um, human rights violation is something that's been happening since. Yeah. Well, we just face it worse than everybody. Mm-hmm. We we face it worse, and we get our rights get trampled on for like serious of mm-hmm. Like something so simple, just oh, arresting. Mm-hmm. It's 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 madness because even when I saw a video where the guy called someone came to rob him in the shop and he yeah. called the cops and they arrested him. The black what? guy, like I'm the one that called you people. Oh. Someone that the, and apparently I heard that the person that robbed even walked past the police. Wow. Like, so in their mind, the first thing that came to their mind oh, is, he's oh, black. is this is the person. Like, do you see how they're already conditioned in their minds that oh, black people are yeah. and all that? Even videos on Twitter that have surfaced, you would like literally hear in the video the police guy saying, Oh, I'm looking for yeah. a certain person, but I have to arrest you because you're black and I don't know if it's you. Like, how do you know if you know who you're looking they for? They arrested a girl and they messed up her leg. I think they dislocated her leg. Oh. And they said she looked, she um, made the description of a 30 year old male that they were looking for. The male that they were, the person they were looking for was like, at least almost times two of our size, according to the description they gave them. How do you pick someone this slim that doesn't even fit the description that is not yeah. 30 and is not even a man and say that's the description you met? Like, how does that make sense? It's, and then, even if, even if, even if like, that's the description you have, right? Yeah. Why don't you just arrest them peacefully? Or just be like, them. why must you break something? You like get you. to just go on your neck, on your knee, and yeah. hit you. And, and, and you know, even in that, in the pro, one of the protests in America, there was still a cop that knelt on somebody's neck. Yes, it's 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 almost like you know, there's this there's this thing here when you when you do something and you know that the consequences is just going to be like a slap on your yeah. wrist. You you would you would openly do it. You be like, what is what is there? Yeah. Like I can do it whatever way I want to. Yeah. So. If that punishment doesn't, like, if that it's punishment doesn't, make, yeah, it's it's useless. If it doesn't measure up, yeah. it's useless because that's why I think that's why the protests are going on. Like, we need that those we punishments. Need those, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This the punishment has to be severe because with punishments, yeah, that's what conditions people. The only reason why people don't drive past um, traffic lights is because if they drive past. You'll give them fine, tickets yeah. and you'll be fine. Yeah. So in that way, it becomes condition in your head that that's oh, true. all right, okay. Just then, like Nigeria, exactly. when people don't obey anything, yeah, that's true. You, right. The same reason why I feel in like in Nigeria, rape is so rampant because mm-hmm. there's no because when you go to the police and the police tell you, well, what was she wearing? What was she wearing? Go on. And thing is, it's not even only although like men do it a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. some women also have that condition in their mind that oh, I think this was the girl that was. Great. Yeah. And her sister was complaining that when the father went to the police station, they, they were like they, they were insulting the man and the, the, the police woman said, Now your daughter the first rape. Like, is your daughter the first person that will that will be raped? What? Like this lady was raped and killed. And that's like that's your that's your that's response. your that's your response as a lady. Like it's, it just shows like how conditioned their minds are, I guess. I don't know. So I feel like once we can enforce punishment on these things, yeah, yeah. people that do it will shut up. Like you won't, you won't, you won't want to do it if you go to jail. If you know that, yeah, if you know that the consequences are great yeah. and fast, that's yeah. that's even fast because then they try and drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it. Especially with the police officers, because so many of them have gone scot free, so they feel like them okay, like that guy, I'm a cop, you know. Yeah, just, like like just this one, they just posted bill. What the one million? Like if I shoot you, yeah. I shoot you. They just give me a defeat. Yeah. Me. I'll just like. It's just I'll just like black. exactly. Apparently, at the point they used to carry like they used to carry um crack up and down like police. Yes. Man. Like so, if they shoot someone like wrongly, they just bring oh, oh, and say, oh, oh yeah, he was doing drugs and try to attack. That that's so they they already see they already see us as less. Mm-hmm. 
slavery slavery is slavery is not something we can openly do. So the police system is there to enslave us mm. without without putting under the law. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will do my job. I will do my job. So it's it's messed up. That's crazy. Yep. Mm. Hopefully things get better with like the protests, the donations, the petitions, and yeah. everything. Yeah. So how do those petitions work? Um so if they sign it, like so, they... yeah, I think, we, I think with petitions, mm -hmm. I think I was trying to, I, I read somewhere how it worked. I didn't finish reading it, but mm -hmm. it was saying something about, um, it, it brings the conversation, like it makes conversation more like the, the I think it's changed at all with the organization and the mm -hmm. petitions. I think maybe they, they bring it to the people you are, like the more it is, yeah. they bring it like to the people. I think they put on billboards, they put, put like, they publicize okay. it for you. Okay. If it's more, the, the more your petition is, yeah. the more publicity you give to it. I think that's how it works. I'm not so okay. sure how it works, but okay. that's how it works. And um, I don't know. What as far as for the donations, I don't know. I'm 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 like I'm too minded about it. Like my mind yeah. is because I, I read somewhere also yesterday that um, there is a BLM Black Lives Matter Association apparently. It's run by white people. No, it's actually black people. Like people have been donating money, yeah. but they don't have like financial records or anything. And like people, and, 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 and people are donating millions, mm. and they openly said they don't have an administration, they don't have any structure. So it basically, people are just dumping money exactly. into baskets. Exactly, that's the thing. That's the thing that scares people from donating because a lot of people will use this opportunity to, to do evil exactly. and just steal people's money. Because because there was one. <laughs> there was one um um fund that I donated to, and I'm like, I didn't even think. I just gave money because I just wanted to help. And I'm like, hmm, the Nigerian of me is just like, why did I even check? Like, why did I do? do yeah, like, what do you want to use it for? Do my research. And like, one of the comments, I was saying, like, is this legit? Like, don't do this. So I'm just like, wow, God, please. You you see my heart. You know why I gave this money. So it's in your hands now. That's 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 that's, that's, that's the best, like, stance to take. Yeah. I used to, at the time, I used to cause, like, I give, I, 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 give, I give, like, people stuff a lot. Like, yeah. Maybe on the road, their guys or people yeah. that are like less privileged and all that. Yeah. I like giving to them. Yeah. yeah. So I've given someone that came to ask me money before, like um, I think 500 naira at them. And I was at the mall. This guy had chicken republic to go and buy like food, chicken republic. And he bust my head so much because <laughs> I didn't even have enough money to buy chicken republic. Mm -hmm. Like this guy was going, this guy, I thought it was like, because he did he was going to eat. He, oh, like he, just he waited for me to leave, but the mall is like I, that day I was walking around the mall. So like, yeah. I was just going around waiting for someone to yeah. to pass time. I was walking around the mall. And I saw him in the kitchen. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, and this, guy, is, not like, to eat. this guy is going to eat. I'm not even eating. Like, <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't beg me that, oh, I don't have money you know, yeah. for food. He begged me, like, I think it was, he begged me about transport. Like, he didn't have money, he was wow. stranded and all that. Just trying that I'm going to eat chicken. And it didn't make sense, but yeah. then. I always told myself that I was never going to stop giving because of that. Because yeah. I don't know, man. God has God has seen yeah. my heart. I didn't give him that money because I gave it because I genuinely thought he was in need. need yeah? yeah. So I won't stop giving. Because to, yeah. But I believe that more of these donations, more more people, the way people are going um, asking questions, people should ask questions about these donations. Donations. Yeah. Question the organization. Okay, what are they using this money mm -hmm. for? What is money going to, use to Nigeria for? too? Like, because I don't know. I haven't seen. Um, I know Tenny Otelola posted some organizations that you can donate to, but like even with what was going on in Nigeria, I was scared to donate to funds, or like how do I know it's getting to the family, that type of thing. So I would just say like do more research and know, I don't know, people just have to back it up. And then they, I know they were like, even for the Minnesota fund thing, there were people saying, oh, it's being won by white people. And, and there's no problem with like white people running fund and things like that, but like what is the motive behind that or I don't feel that there's a problem with them running it or like running the money yeah. because in the end they, they can't feel our pain. Sure. So if if they they might not know how to prioritize oh they'll be like oh well this this is not that important now. Mm -hmm. But we don't know if it's important to the black person. Yeah. So I believe that like except if there is a black person that's in charge of like making the decision on the money, mm -hmm. fine. But I believe that whoever is the one Concerned. Just like giving the money for the funds for like for example that in the UAS case, yeah. giving it to the 
Look at government chairman. That whole day. <laughs> yeah. Like, how does that work? Really exactly. Yeah. You should be the person involved or the person closest to the person like involved. Office, exactly. Yeah. That should have that, um, what do you call it, the control over how it is. Yeah. So, what I usually do is, I, I, most times I go grassroots. Yeah. Because I believe that when people donate to, I, I don't like only donating when um, when there's, there's crisis, something happening. Yeah. yeah, I belong to from Nigeria. I belong to like two um, NGOs here, yeah, mm-hmm. where we do different stuff. Passion for Health is one, then um, Petals Initiative. Passion we, for one. Mm. <laughs> what we do is um, in the in the Passion for Health, we, we send we we go out, we train people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think once a year. We do this program called My Skills, My Future. We train people like, on skills, like yeah. young people on skills, because it's, it's not enough to give young people money. Yeah. We have to train them also. Yeah. So we do that. So we donate for stuff like that. We then we do this feed a family stuff every year. We just go randomly. We go to like a very suburb place where the woman is probably not expecting or the man is not expecting, yeah. and we just give them like chocolate or food and all that, and just the joy in those people's faces, yeah. Because then I know because I'm like I'm, I'm gonna take it to the boat place. Yeah. I know what my money is being spent on. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So I feel like more people should is that go grassroots. Right? Is this still running? Yeah, yeah it is. Okay. I feel Are like you managing people, it from here? Um, not like I'm not managing like, like being that. An I'm just like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm doing an executive. I don't have to be here. Okay. I just have to contribute. I do like graphic design. So I do like, the graphics for both. I'm like the social media manager, I guess, yeah. for both um, organizations. Yeah. So I do graphics then support ideas and all that so mm-hmm. i believe that when people do go grassroots with things like that mm-hmm. yeah, it makes it makes it um, easier for you to know where your money is where mm-hmm. your money is going you can for example you can't go and put something into the ladder i donated to this foundation where's my money mm-hmm. they'll probably not reply you but you can question someone if it's like a smaller organization yeah. here that will get my money what, what are you using the money for you can ask for accountability yeah. Yeah. so i believe that more people should invest in like maybe grassroots um, NGOs and all that and help people, I guess. Okay, I think um, that was a good conversation. Yeah. Thank you for sure. coming on my YouTube channel. I hope you guys got some information, um, lots of information actually from this video. Uh, don't con- don't stop sharing, uh, don't stop donating, but do your research before you donate and try to find out, like you said, uh, more grassroots NGOs yeah. and things like that and um, help people don't stop helping keep the conversation going and be blessed thank you (laughs) that's it bye guys